Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collecting. Uh, today what I'd like to do is to look at the giving back a watch from service. Now, I had one done. It was <laughs> quite an extensive. In fact, it was an overhaul. And uh, these overhauls uh, can be quite expensive. And so the first thing you want to do when you get your watch back is, is to make sure that, the, that your, your watch is working as it was supposed to be working after they fixed it. And in order to do this, um, we're going to take a look at a process. Let's just take a look at a couple other things too. Uh, but for now, uh, let's get started. Okay, I just got my watch back higher overhaul. And so let's let's take a look here. Get it out. They <laughs> put it in a FedEx box and then wrapped it in a UPS bag. All right. And there it is. Boy, they have a really nice box that they send it to you in. So let's see, this is my resonance, I believe. I'll pull it out here and open it up and let's take a look at it. I'm going to put my gloves on because this is a special. And uh, they included a brand new band. <laughs> Jeez, those bands they mm, they are very expensive bands it's great holy cow and look at this case all right well uh here we go oh my god it's gorgeous what a oh jeez is that god this is a gorgeous watch all right well is it on yeah it's on and it, let's see if the time is correct yep the time's correct and the indicator if you can see it the uh, power reserve indicator is right here and it shows it to be been 30 hours since it's been wound. Now, what I want to do with this is let it wind all the way down. Because uh, when I sent it in, now this is not, like I said, this is not a, um, they did not um, just service it. It was totally overhauled. And um, F.P. Jorn wanted the times to be set exactly at the same time. And notice the second hands. <laughs> They're perfectly coordinated. This is using resonance. Okay, when you get your uh, watch back from service, uh, the first thing you want to do is to inspect it and make sure that the uh, service was done. Now, uh, this particular watch, the, um, it would not be, it wouldn't wind all the way down to the, until it was totally unwound. And so I'm gonna let it unwind all the way. And looking at the coordination here, <laughs> it's perfect. So it does appear that things were done right. Okay, now the um, the next thing I want to do, I want to put on the um, uh, put the buckle back on. Now the one I have here is the rubberized one. This is what I call my everyday uh, <laughs> beater band. <laughs> There's not very much beater about uh, anything that uh, FP Jorn does, but uh, this one has a sort of rubberized under here, and so it doesn't 
get banged up as much. And this one is my fancy smancy uh, band. And I keep it in, in uh, totally pristine condition. And then when I go to, oh, for example, when I go on a cruise and I want to show off and have it, I'll, I'll wear this band. But for now, oh, uh, and then the new band that they sent me, I have that one too. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a fat city. Okay. One of the things about uh, bands, remember that the buckle always goes up at the 12 o'clock. And of course you want to flip it over when you put the band in and you see the back of the band. Now the thing I really like about F.P. Jorn uh, bands is that it has this little um, pull button here and uh, that little lever you just put it in one end put it in uh, like this and then just pull the other one back so I'm gonna do that and at least I should remove one of my gloves okay so I'll just put this in here like this and let's see if I can do this get that up there and There it is. Very simple to do. And then I'll do the other one. Okay. Double check. And then I do the same thing here. I put this one in here. Like this. And the other one here. Excuse, oops. There we go. So now... It's all ready to wear, okay? And I'll just take off my other watch and pop this guy on. And I want to, here's my lens cleaner. I wanna be sure I have a nice dry wrist before I put on my totally overhauled <laughs> watch. Very nice watch, okay. I'll put it on here, and we're back in business. This is, um, okay, and there's that. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to uh, test it on the time graph or make sure that uh, everything is copacetic. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do that next. Before you send your watch in, it's very important to, to use your time grapher to check to make sure that you have some kind of base to measure how, how well your, your watch is doing now. And so before I sent my watch in, I, uh, I, did the, I, I got the numbers on my time grapher. And you can see they're off uh, for, especially for a watch like this, by about 17 seconds. Now, the FP Jorn resonance doesn't really work right unless it's within five seconds. Uh, and usually five seconds is considered to be excellent uh, timekeeping. And so if it's 17, that's pretty far out and it's going to need some kind of adjustment. But if I get my watch back and I haven't taken uh, a time grapher before, I won't know for sure whether the change was was really done or not or to what extent the difference is. This position, it appears to be about as close as you're going to get. Uh, going plus one and minus one and zero uh, is is extremely good. You got to keep in mind too is that it's it's really measuring uh, two different uh, timekeepings. Uh, the the uh, one on the left and one on the right. So anyhow, uh, as far as the work that was done uh, by F. P. Jorn, I'm a happy camper. Okay. Um, we seem to be in pretty good shape. 
Uh, by the way, I took a number of readings over a period of three days. Uh, that way, I made sure that uh, my readings got a lot of different finding out. You know, if you wind it up, it comes back and it's fine. And then it spikes one way or the other after you've had it for a couple of days. <laughs> uh, something was wrong. I took it over a period of, uh, let's say, three days. And um, you can see there, there's some variation, but it never goes out of uh, five seconds a day. And that's what I want to keep it in. And it seemed, this sounds strange, it seemed that it got better as time went on. I think in parts it's because one of the repairs that was made was that it wouldn't wind up all the way. Um, or, no, it would wind up all the way. It wouldn't unwind all the way. And so I think down on the bottom part, this was sort of the mainspring or whatever it was, was getting uh, used to being there again. Okay, now uh, real quickly, there's just uh, one little thing, is that once you get your watch back, I just wanted to give you a follow-up with one little tip about how to, uh, how to take care of your watches, especially uh, those with uh, leather bands. Most of mine have leather or reptile bands. And um, just, a, just a quick tip. Uh, one last thing I wanted to um, mention about uh, working with keeping your watches in the best possible shape, uh, especially with leather bands, just the regular ones, when you take them off and you put them in your in your watch case don't buckle them just just put them in wrap them around like this and put them in this way and that way you're not going to get your buckle all messed up uh, if you have a deployant you can just uh, clip the uh, deployment closed and that'll work fine without messing up your watch at all. Uh, for example, here's my uh, Patek Philippe. And you can see how smooth uh, the band is. The only time it gets sort of wrinkled in here is when I wear it. And right now it's in a state of rest since it got worn a lot last year. And uh, keep everything in good shape. And that way, um, there's another thing I do too, and this may be a little overkill. Um, I keep a, keep my, um, my gloves in this. Sometimes what will happen is that during the middle of the day I won't be paying much attention to anything and I'll be doing one thing or the other and my watches are, are getting the sun. Okay well my watch is back home again and it's working the way it's supposed to. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, thanks to uh, Ryan Schmidt, Ryan is the uh, author of the um, wristwatch handbook, uh, he said that um, F.P. Jorn, when, when he first had this model, uh, he expected people to keep both of the times at the same time. But a lot of people, like me, uh, I had one time that I'd use the other as uh, like a GMT or something like that. And, you know, I was perfectly happy with that. But what he wanted people to see <laughs> was how these two different elements kept exactly the same time through resonance. And so he changed the face on it. Um, Mine's from 2002, and the the new ones from, I think they're from 2010 or so, of the last seven years, have had two different dials so that people wouldn't try to keep different times and they can always see them. And so what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm keeping mine at the same time. You can see the, uh, there that they're exactly the same. It's just phenomenal. Um, 
looking at this. Okay, well, that's my story about getting things back from our uh, service and checking them out. And I'd like to hear your comments. Do you have any other ideas about, uh, about doing that? The cost of these things can be fairly dear. Some watches, um, you don't need so much. Others, you need it when you need it. I'll put it that way. Uh, I got this done because um, I didn't want to have a watch that wasn't just right. Uh, you know, so I got, uh, so I had it done. So I took care of it. Okay, uh, that's all for now. I really would like to hear your comments. Love to hear from you. What you have to say, what you think about this. This is also an invitation to subscribe if you like. And I'll see you Sunday for our collection review. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collections.